Sup y'all, the name's Tectone and today's video is going out to anybody who still thinks that photosynthesis gives your character extra energy. Yeah, pet skills is what we're talking about today. It is extremely important to make sure that you're using the right shit because there's a lot of pet skills that seem like they're really, really good when they're actually complete trash. So, as well as the misconception about photosynthesis, there's a lot of false ideals about pet skills in general. So we're gonna be talking about the actives and we're gonna be talking about uh, the passives and it should just overall be a pretty nice video. So make sure to like, comment, and subscribe if you wanna keep up to ooh la la and some future content that I have in store with y'all. Let's get into it. So there is a ton of active skills so I can see how people could get overwhelmed. But if you ask me, what lines up the most for increasing your DPS for your pet, or if your role is a DPS or even healer, if you're going by what pet you should be using, the second ability that you want to use whenever you unlock that second slot is going to be Rend. Now, I see a lot of people saying to use Smash instead, but I'm going to have to disagree because Rend, the thing that's really nice, if you look at it, Rend says, attack the enemy and inflict damage of 260% plus 500 of assist over six seconds yes this does not take into account pet damage and if you're really optimizing your class as a dps or a healer you should be running the highest assist stat possible so rend should line up drastically more than uh, smash but if you are using a pet with much higher dps because you're not fortunate enough to use a pet with high assist then i guess you can get away with smash but other than that you really should want to be going with rend plus the ratio is 60 percent better regardless of the fact that it's a dot because you're going to get that off pretty much every single time Time. you might lose a little bit of value um, on the last one but you're going to be casting that ability more than four times in the fight so even if you lose like the last five seconds of the last cast you're still going to come up with more net gains than you would otherwise for using smash the other the number one ability that you should be using the moment you unlock that first active slot is pretty obvious i feel but just in case it's inspire now, Inspire is amazing because, once again, it is scaling with your assist rather than your pet DPS, so you're already going to get more bang for your buck if you are fortunate enough to have the pet that you should be having, aka a assist-focused pet. Um, and it's great because you can even use this to snapshot your abilities, whether that be your Hunter Hawk, um, your Mage uh, Blizzard, your Warlock Soul Seal, or your Assassin Poison. Uh, snapshotting is the name of the game. You know that from my toy videos. You know that from my snapshotting video in general. Uh, just in case you don't know what snapshotting is, you can go watch that video. Uh, it should be a link to the end of the video. Uh, and if you don't, go check it out. But yeah, Inspire, it's amazing. It's, I mean, it's, hey, it's more damage to you. That's what. That's pretty much what you want at the end of the day, right? So yeah, Inspire is great. Okay, passive skills. I'm excited to talk about this one because there is an ability that is way, way overhyped for no reason just because of its rarity. And yeah, we'll talk about that super soon. And also, some of these abilities are going to be a lot better on particular classes, and I will mention what classes those are. So we're going to talk about three abilities that are tied for eighth place, aka what's going to fill up your eighth slot on your passive whenever, you know, in two years from now when you unlock that shit. So there's going to be three abilities. Let's talk about the first one right now, which really pisses me off. We're going to be talking about On Slap. The reason why it pisses me off because it's supposed to be On Slot. This game has been out for so goddamn long now. Please, for the love of God, add a T. Make it On Slot. You know it's supposed to be there. While you're at it, please put a space in between the name and the level. Anywho, On Slot. Whenever a pet launches a basic attack, inflict a bonus damage of 840 on the enemy. In case you aren't aware, 840 is pretty much jack shit even comboed up several times like you'd have to get that like a hundred times for it to do the amount of damage that one auto attack would do at my stage as a warlock uh so regardless it's pretty yikes but uh let's keep it going next we are going to be talking about beast heart when the master launches a basic attack inflict a bonus damage of 790 so this ability is shit on a class like a warlock but it's actually pretty damn good if you're an assassin. So keep that in mind. Some abilities get way better because an assassin's base attack speed is like somewhere between like 1.15 and 1.3. Whereas a warlock somewhere between 2.2 and 2.3, I believe off the top of my head. So yeah, this gets pretty much double value as an assassin. This could be bumped up to like the sixth slot if you're an assassin. It's actually quite... It's quite all right if you're an assassin, but for other classes, you're kind of out of luck. Uh, but it's nice to see that assassin's getting some more love. Uh, next, we're going to talk about cooperation or cooperation, depending if you want to pronounce it correctly or incorrectly like I did. After the master casts a skill, inflict a bonus damage of 1850 during the next basic attack. Yes, same deal. Um, much better 
on Assassin than it would be on any other class, or shit, even the Gladiator for that matter. Next up, we have Splash, which is actually, hey, way better than the previously mentioned abilities. Um, when the pet launches a basic attack, inflict bonus damage of 1980 to the nearest enemy unit. The reason why I like this is, is because it will hit the nearest enemy unit. It's really nice that your pet can take care of those pesky ads. That way, maybe there's a chance that your pet takes an ad down rather than you having to like uh, have your character's AI hopefully swap to it. Having another ability to get some cleave damage out that isn't just you is really nice. And also just the general scaling of it is crazy higher just because it's epic. All right, next, we're gonna be talking about Overpower at the number six slot. Now, this one's a little bit underrated because it is great, but it does give you passive ignore defense, which is gonna be much better on any tankier boss that you come, uh, come across. But the other thing that's really nice is just that there's no gimmicky bullshit to it. It's just like, you get 330 ignore defense. Hey, that's pretty damn nice. That applies to all of your abilities as well. Sure, it loses some synergy if you're using abilities like uh, uh, Inspire, but regardless, it's still a really great addition to have to your roster for sure. Just because ignore defense is so damn strong. Uh, the next thing we're talking about is number five. is one that people think is crazy good. I'm going to disagree. If you disagree with me, sh feel free to leave a comment. Uh, Fury. Hey. 1.8% <laughs> crit rate and 1.8% crit damage. Turns out really isn't that high. Um, if you think about it, that means... Just to give you the math here, with 1.8% extra crit rate, that means every 50 attacks that you do, you might crit because of this ability. Yeah, that doesn't sound very good now, does it? Oh, give yourself an extra 2% to crit. One in, one in 50. And that's at rank two. This is rank one. So yeah, uh, the ability is kind of shit. But the math, the math technically adds up to do more than the previously mentioned ability. So you can use it if you like, but it's really, it ain't going to take over any of the other abilities I'm about to mention in front of this. All right, next one. Inner focus, if we can find it here real quick. Inner focus. Okay. This one is deceptive. So increase pet attack by 70 when each attack uh, hits the same target to a max of 15 layers it would be reset if changed target. Now this ability is amazing on single target damage fights. This will give your pet an extra 1,050 damage at rank two. Yeah, that's pretty damn good. I mean, and your pet attacks pretty damn quick. Uh, it's not as good as the other abilities that I mentioned, but hey, that's pretty damn nice. And it's a green. You probably have a shit ton of these. Uh, this one's coming at the number four spot. So if you don't have anything that I'm about to mention above it, feel free to use it. It will give you a slight DPS increase. It'll be really nice. Next thing is Battle Heart. At the beginning of combat, which I love, at the beginning of combat, increase pet's attack attribute by 940 points. If you'll notice, that is less than inner focus, but this one doesn't have to be stacked, and you can use it for any fights. The universal, uh, the universal effect and just how it persists from the very beginning of combat, it will give you a lot of additional value just because it lasts so much goddamn longer than inner focus, and there's literally no downside to using it. All right, that's the number three spot. Now for the number two spot, we have competitive heart and i love this one because at the beginning of combat increase pets assist attribute points by 600 points in case you don't know um the assist of the pet actually increases your damage which is really nice because you're going to scale infinitely better than your pet would with the additional damage that it has so being able to give your main character more damage is absolutely insane and once again do not overlook that this does persist through the entire combat which is great um, means that this will snapshot onto your abilities, even though it persists regardless. But it is that little bit of extra damage that will just continue to scale and scale and scale and scale throughout the entire fight. It's absolutely amazing. And number one, you probably already knew this, is photosynthesis. Once again, look, increase the base energy by one point and restore one point of energy every 7.6 seconds. Look, dude, I get how people would be confused, okay? I get it! Because for some reason, they don't display the pet's energy bar. I don't believe, right? I don't believe. Maybe I've missed it my entire life. But I'm pretty sure they don't display the pet's energy bar. No, they don't. Okay. Wanted to make sure I wasn't making an ass of myself. But, but regardless, this gives your pet more energy. You're going to have to take my word for it. 
So is everybody else because I don't know, dude. I don't know why they don't display this shit. I don't know why you kind of just have to guesstimate whenever your pets are going to use their abilities and how much they scale and how much energy they cost. It's a little bit yikes, but regardless, getting an extra base of one energy uh, can also speed up the process for being able to snapshot certain abilities. There are certain abilities that you cannot snapshot unless you have this photosynthesis uh, because it does speed up the energy gain for your pets that quickly. And being able to snapshot with more damage when you use Inspire, yeah, it turns out it's pretty important because that's the damage you're going to be getting for the rest of the fight with your warlock or your assassin and you know a big chunk with your hunter uh so yeah i mean you know it makes sense when you think about it. if you disagree feel free to leave me a comment or uh shit talk me in the ulala general discord or my discord i don't care <laughs> to be honest i think it's funny uh regardless all right outro all right y'all that's gonna do for this one i hope you enjoyed the video now i am gonna say right now in case you uh, made it this far in the video hey thank you uh the watch time helps a lot um, and also, hey, hope you're still enjoying Ooh La La. I want to let y'all know right now that the guides were almost done. I have been requested to make a tutorial for every single boss in the game. I'm not going to do that. And the reason why I'm not going to do that is because if I were to make a guide for every single fight in the entire game, that would ruin the fun of the entire game because the fun of Ooh La La is figuring out how to beat different bosses. If there's literally somebody who is already coming to my channel to see how to play their class better, and then they're going to come to my channel to show me show you how to beat every boss then they're not even playing the game anymore so maybe i'll do it for big break points but still probably not because it's going to feel really good when you figure that out yourself but uh i i would feel like i'd be doing this community in injustice if i would explain how to beat every single boss it's just a little bit ridiculous it would leave a poor taste in my mouth and if you're out there and you agree with me let me know because it's just, i don't know i feel like it's a little bit yikes regardless that's gonna do it for this video uh but once again um if you do want to leave uh need a guide for something else let me know if you want to see some type of content if you want to see more pvp arena content or just my progression in general or even some summons let me know but uh other than that hey thanks so much for watching i've been tech y'all been great hope y'all are having a damn good one and as always peace